Uh, so, uh, Jagadish, uh, you came in. Tell us where you're from, where you're calling in from. But, uh, hi, everyone. Yeah. Are, are you in India? Yeah, I'm in India, in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh -huh. We have uh, around uh, 500 cases. You have about 500 cases. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. But so far, three deaths. Uh -huh. But the uh, situation is under control. Ah, well, uh, and are, are people keeping things locked down in India, in your area? Uh, lockdown, I, it's not that satisfactory. People are not following the lockdown because people, I think, they forget their own responsibilities. Uh -huh. And uh, there are, uh, there are uh, working in the ground, I find that uh, there are no PEPs. There, there are no what? Uh, protection, uh, protection gear for doctors and health workers. Oh my goodness. And, that and is our, the main issue now. And are you in Hyderabad? I'm in Vijayawada, southern part. Vijayawada? Uh, 300 kilometers from Hyderabad. I see, okay. <laughs> I know Vijay, Vijayawara. <laughs> I used to have uh, clients there, so that's uh, good. Good to know. And but you're using your mask when you go out. Definitely, I'm using it. I'm and maintain distance also. And uh, we are working in the field for the uh, migrant laborers. I see. Because uh, these are not covered under any government scheme. Yes. So they are the main sufferers. Uh -huh. So apart from actual uh, patients, these are also a part of our uh, service. I see. So, so you're about 300 kilometers to the east of Hyderabad, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of the other place that's there. Uh, Hi, Kushbu. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, your where your no, naval uh, naval school is, uh, the naval bases in uh, Vizag, Vizag, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, Vizag. Yeah. Vizag also, there were cases, a lot yeah. of cases now. A lot of cases, yes, I'm very worried about India. Um, let me uh, see if I it's can. It's nice, uh, you are mentioning the uh, city's names. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I have had business in these places for many years, for a quarter yeah. century, actually. Yeah. And um, so... Uh, I used to work for Plan India. No, I'm not. I haven't been involved in Plan India. That's long after my time. No, no, no. I used to work with Plan International, a UK-based uh, NGO. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Good for you. Working for children. For yeah. the last 15 years. Yeah. Uh, one of my partners uh, in, in, uh, in Andhra Pradesh was uh, Carvey. Okay. Carvey is one of my partners. And um, let's, uh, let's just go around the room and introduce our, ourselves. I'm sorry that uh, for some reason, we we don't have Tim's video here, but we may be able to hear Tim. Yes, I'm very much here. Okay. And, uh, I can't. I don't know why the video is not working, but uh, but I'll be here for the for the duration. So okay. I'm in I'm in Montana, which is the northwest part of the U.S. Uh, it's very cold and uh, a beautiful place to be. So I feel lucky about that. Not very many coronavirus cases here, but we're also sequestered, so that's going to help. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Tim, would you go around the room? Tim is my co-host on this activity. Okay. Uh, Jerome, tell us where you are. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm in the uh, mountains of Asheville, North Carolina, and. Uh, it's beautiful mountains and everything's blooming and, uh, you know, it's very beautiful in the spring, except I have allergies. So <laughs> I have to limit myself going outside, but, 
uh, we've had a one death in our county from the coronavirus and people were not wearing masks at all. So, uh, you know, it's, it's very, uh, you know, I'm really disappointed in people. So maybe they'll pay attention. So, uh, Kushbu, can you tell us where you are? I'm glad to see you. Hi, Namaste. It's uh, early morning here. Um, I'm in Bangalore. And uh, yeah, it's little, little blue. I am little blue today. You are. Yeah, yeah. What What's the I, news I, from What's the news from Bangalore on coronavirus? We have cases spiking. We have cases spiking. Um, there is two buildings like. Uh, Two minutes walking distance from my place. Okay, that's frightening enough. And ha have you had any deaths as yet? Okay, wait a minute. There. Yeah. Now, now we have. Okay. Yeah, we have we have few deaths. The larger, the the bigger number of deaths are coming out from people who are migrating right now on foot so that those deaths are are that number is bigger than actually the people who are being killed by the virus for now so it is it is quite grim situation it is quite grim situation you know? yeah. oh boy yeah i have for me, as, as in terms of safety and all, like I have all the resources right now. Like I go every day evening, um, feeding all the all the stray dogs here and a uh, few people, few homeless people around. So um, now it's like police police is coming at my home. If they find anybody who is in need, they are coming and telling me. Mm -hmm. And I feel so bad about it. It's yeah. like it's like you should be doing it. I don't have anything, but you are asking me to do. Now I'm obliged to do everything, and I will definitely do it. But so, so so yeah, it is. It's like I understand that they don't know anybody around here who might immediately like help with something. But they know I can like I do it, but. The real situation is that I don't have much resources to do all those things, and so I feel little, little helpless about it. But yeah, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I I am safe. God is grace. Oh, and you yes. have. And I started you... breathing. Say, say that. You have new new friends to talk to. Yeah, Jagdishi. I I know him from quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I started reading, I started reading Red Book um, yesterday. I was so hooked into it, like I was, like it was uh, taking over me, you know. Yes. <laughs> so I started reading Red Book last night. Yeah. It's been known to do that. <laughs> yes, it has that tendency. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you have access to it. Say that again, Tim. Well, that's what happens. I, I didn't you, hear. That's what happens when you start to read the Red Book. <laughs> you get sucked in. Oh, okay. Well, well thank <laughs> yeah. you. It's good, yeah. it's good to hear that you're good and that you're looking after your neighbors. I wish you had more resources, but that's a good attitude to have. So it's good to see you here. Uh, Joss, tell us about how you're doing in, in Hawaii. Well, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, because I don't, I can't see if I'm on mute. Um, aloha. For first of all, aloha, everyone. And I'm in Honolulu. It's the 50th state in the United States, and um, it's about 5,000 miles 
away from, oh no, about 3,000 miles away from California. So we're fairly isolated. And, um, but I'm doing my part in social distancing and isolating myself too. Here in Hawaii, um, from last year inaugural, uh, last week on Tuesday, I mentioned that Hawaii had about 150 cases. Well, this week, um, as of today, there's approximately um, more than 300. And um, last week, there was only one death and now there are four. So it is climbing. And um, fortunately, everybody is on lockdown and even the beaches here, we have beautiful beaches here, very um, tempting to go to the beach. It's all barricaded. However, a community folks who live near the beach, who have waterfront can access to it, but they are practicing social distancing. But, um, but that aside, Kushpu, I, I really feel for you. Um, my heart just, uh, just aches to hear the pain of observing all that is unfolding in front of you. And as a social worker, um, already you are um, a person who has um, a deep sensitivity to people and very intuitive and a person who wants to give. But you need to um, realize that you are giving enough. Sometimes we forget um, ourselves and uh, we get sucked into the bigger um, problem that's beyond our scope. So we need to tell ourselves um, that we can give in our capacity, within our capacity. And um, oftentimes prayer and meditation is really the, the, one of the biggest things you can give to, to others. But thank you very much for sharing and um, we are with you. This is, a, well, Skip and Tim have started this community. It's a community that has turned into a family. So you are part of this um, huge family, but for each individual, you mean a lot. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. I, I needed to hear that. Like I really needed to hear that. Thank you so much. I love you so much. God bless you all. Yeah, God bless you too. I mean it. Yeah. If you stick with us to the end, you can say your prayer again. We're, we're all going to love that for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sure, sure. That was very yeah, moving sure. the last time. We all need to support each other. And Joss, which island are you on? I'm on the island of Oahu, O-A-H-U. It's the largest island of the seven island chain, Hawaiian chain. So it's the uh, major island. So of course we have the most um, cases of coronavirus. Um, and uh, we have approximately close to about a million people total in, the, in this entire state of Hawaii. So um, 300 is significant. Uh, it's not like California where of course California has m many millions of people living in that state, um, but uh, is, we are very, very blessed. All I can say is we're very blessed right now, and everybody has the aloha spirit and are um, pretty much following the guidelines of uh, social distancing. Of course, there's a few because they're the millenniums, they're the young folks that, uh, you know, take are not taking this seriously. But most of the people, I'd say most of the people are taking it seriously. And are, are the islands, um, are they pretty much separated from each other or is there still a lot of traffic between them? Oh, um, air, airplane um, travel has been uh, almost stopped. Yeah, I, I mean, we're trying very, very hard to keep um, influx of tourists from coming in. And um, if they do, then they are um, 
mandated to be in self quarantine for 14 days. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. Well, Nancy, tell us how you're doing. Well, it's been a, an interesting day. I can relate to Kushku. Uh, I had a few hours where I was just feeling helpless and powerless to Kushku. You're not alone. And uh, I was able to call a friend of mine, and she was not blue on this particular day, and so she could uh, help remind me of what tools I have to deal with things and that kind of thing. What, I, what had really gotten to me, I guess I should say where I am, I'm in Reno, Nevada, which is a state next to California. And the weather's been beautiful, but we're expecting snow this weekend. But what I realized is that uh, my daughter is uh, getting her Crohn's disease activated again. And this can be very serious. She almost died at one point. And uh, as a mother, those of you with children know when your child, no matter how old, is in danger, why it touches your heart, opens your heart. So uh, that's kind of what I've been doing today. I'm doing great though right now. I've been able to turn it around uh, through some meditation, through uh, talking to myself through accepting my blues and welcoming them and saying that uh, I'm going ahead anyway. I'm going to go ahead anyway. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Nancy. It's good to check in with you. Uh, Nick, how are you doing over in Singapore? Oh, um, it's, uh, it's, Pretty much the same as um, the last time I was here with you guys, except that um, statewide it's escalated, uh, meaning that next, starting from Tuesday, there's going to be a, a lockdown, which actually is quite serious. Yeah, because um, like schools, <clears throat> schools have um, entirely turned online, and um, yesterday I heard that um, they also cancelled all mid-year exams which is quite something, yeah. Not the final year, but the mid-year, but that's, that's uh, really something. So, um, yeah, and uh, they're starting to, like the government starting to um, penalize um, companies that do not have um, telecommuting arrangements and basically, you know, to be connected such that um, people can stay home and work can still be done. Yeah, but I think it's quite significant, the lockdown. It's going to be for one month, starting from next Tuesday. Ooh, yeah, well, yeah, so I think, um, yeah, because the last time I was on here, I, I told you guys that, um, you know, it's under control here and, and, and Singapore is pretty well managed. But that being said, for, for it to have a lockdown is definitely an escalation. And I just saw um, the news earlier on that, um, what's that? 75 new cases um, in the last uh, 12 hours in Singapore, which is, uh, yeah, that's quite a number. And, and this morning, my dad was, um, my dad was kind of uh, giving me some quip about saying something like, oh, you know, it's going to be like World War II. He was being, you know, quite, not, not panicked, but he was saying it in this urgent way. And he said something like, oh, um, we're going to run out of food there's going to be no food. And then I told him to, you know, like, uh, it's not like that. People are still going to grow food. But yeah. then, but then I just saw, I'm looking at it now actually about, um, like the articles basically about Hong Kong and Singapore are hungry for Australian produce, but why can't they get it? And it's, um, so it's basically, it revolves around like, um, the flights all being down and shipping prices going up. And yeah, so I didn't think of it this way i mean there's still food but you know it's the distribution the infrastructure is all um affected and um things aren't just starting now but at the same time they are also kind of just starting in the sense that um there will be different levels to it i guess you know the way that the economy will shift and things will be affected so i was quite shocked to see this article actually like I guess I took it for granted that, you know, food will still be around, which I suppose it will, but um, 
yeah, it will, you know, things might, things will get difficult or definitely more complicated. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at the worldometers.info here. And it says Singapore has 1,189 cases. And of those, uh, there have been six, only six deaths so far in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we don't grow our own food. So that's quite a, food is quite, quite something we have to import it. I guess it'll still be okay, but it's something for us to keep in mind because we're such a small island and keep, de very dependent on the outside world. Yes. Yeah. And Andy, maybe we can check in with you. Yes, I'd like, like to hear from Sandy. Hi. Um, I've just been following you, Skip, for a long time. Uh-huh. Thank you. And I'm really, really eager to kind of just, you know, talk to you all, all live. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely really fascinated uh, by this whole collective experience that we're all having. Um, suppose that's the silver lining part for me. Um, but I'm in San Diego. Oh. San Diego and uh, I'm, I have a private practice. And so a lot of folks have been doing with Zoom and FaceTime and uh, meeting some, some of my clients uh, outside my office where we can be six feet apart and still have a session. Uh, and sort of open fresh air um, and it's walking distance, you know, from my house. So I've been trying to do a little bit of that and I work with children. So that's really been difficult. I, I run social skills group with, with kids and uh, you know, it's hard to try and do like zoom with like eight year olds, you know? Yeah, I'm sure it is. My goodness. Um, so, but I did my first group, sort of group session with my team group today, which was interesting. Um, you know, everybody's just trying to warm up to this kind of new way. And as, you know, clinicians in the community, it's, we have to be like sort of doing better than, you know, th those who need our help and provide, you know, support and such. So I still have to find a way of getting these kiddos to still be connected to each other even if it is Zoom and, and such. So I'm really trying to think about that and haven't been thinking too much about just like the danger and this tragedy, except for the fact that I, I'm i familiar with sort of war times and uh, I know what it feels like for like sort of life to be sort of stopped for a while and everybody to sort of be in a different state in this kind of bubble, in this waiting period. I'm very familiar with that. I grew up in Iran during the Iran-Iraq war. So I'm, oh boy. And it's interesting to watch everybody sort of get into that sort of headspace that I had been in for so long. So I feel calmer as a result because I'm very familiar with it. It's so here and now. Yeah, it definitely um, is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a here and now that you, you, you rarely get an opportunity to experience especially with like the whole planet, you know? So right. um, that's my, that's my take. On How long have you been in this country then? When did you um, move? I came when I was 10. So I was in Iran from 79 to 89. And my mom's American, Italian, and my dad's Iranian. So he's still in Iran right now, sort of locked down and, and we're here. And but yeah, I've, I've been, and I've been here for, you know, 30 years. And how are they doing in Iran? Is that getting well, better? It, the, there was originally the sanctions, so they were already having major economic crisis and lack of resources for like people in their, in their, in their hospitals even before this happened. And so now oh with the virus just spreading you know, rapidly, uh, we're just really afraid that Iran's just gonna implode you know, just in, in so many ways, but I guess it's, uh, you know, this is kind of happening everywhere now, so it's interesting. So are the sanctions also applying to medical equipment, or is that? Yes, that there was, there was, I mean, for like several months before mm -hmm. even the virus, there were, the sanctions were so hard that we, there, 
people were dying in the hospital, children specifically, that can't get the particular medicine that they need. Oh, man. So that, and that's why we had so many riots on the streets. And I mean, a lot of controversy already happening in Iran and people not being happy with the government already and not sure where they're going with things. So this is just another layer, another level that is unbelievable. So they, they've ar they already know what it, they already knew what it felt like to not have resources and not be able to travel. And it's, it's kind of ironic that now everybody's experiencing this, but for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Well, at this time it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it, is there a sense that the, that the government is, knows what it's doing and is supporting the people and so on? They don't have a good handle. I mean, it's just like, for example, Tehran is so overpopulated and there's so much smog and almost everybody has respiratory problems. And, uh, you know, the, the economy is just like not doing good because of the sanctions and because of the bad, you know, blood between, you know, U.S. and Iran. So uh, it's really hard to tell. But my dad is stuck there and that's what's really hard about all this. We were trying to get him here before all this happened and they wouldn't let him they wouldn't give him the visa. Oh man. Yeah, so, in, this, in this country, we, we're not very aware of what effect the sanctions have on the ground and how that affects the people there. It's just really tragic. Yes, yes. I thought I would uh, tell a little story about myself and my wife little story out of school <laughs> and, and uh, just to give you a sense of how bad things can really get um, in a household just at, with these um, these things going on so let me I'm, I'm just going to share with you this uh, this little vignette so a couple weeks back, uh, Deb thought that she would get us uh, some foodstuffs that we could use in an emergency. So this is what she bought. And this is a uh, veggie vegetable mix. Okay, and it's, uh, it's by It's Delish. I don't know where it came from. I suspect it might have come from India. But anyway, it's, it's dehydrated vegetables. And so, you know, I thought that was a good idea, preparing for the future, right? So last night, um, she decided that she was going to put this on spaghetti as a, as a little addition to our spaghetti. <laughs> and um, so it was a perfectly nice evening, beautiful spaghetti dinner with the vegetable mix mixed into it. And um, so, you know, I had... I actually had a second helping. And of course, Deb is always uh, criticizing me for overeating, okay? And, uh, and last night I had uh, three glasses of wine, so that's more than I usually have. So I got accused later on, not right at dinner, but of over drinking too. And so, <laughs> so, uh, we had the dinner and then I went and, and finished off the plate. And then um, we sat down and started to watch television. And about an hour later, Deb came out with, um, with some pie that we had left over and served pie. Okay, so we had the pie. <laughs> and, uh, and so with the pie, I was drinking some water. And anyway, what happened next was that I, as soon as I started to eat the pie and took a glass of water, I started to feel bad. So I'm having my pie and drinking this water. And suddenly I'm, I'm just, 
I'm instantly not feeling good. And I've had pieces of the, the, this pie before, so I think I'm okay, but it's getting more and more painful. I'm starting to wonder if I'm having a heart attack. And then all of a sudden I just had to run to the bathroom. So I made it to the toilet, heaved it, heaved, and I thought I was clear. I started to clean up some mess, got everything under control. Debbie starts to beat me up for overeating and for over drinking. Okay, so so she says, Here I am. Here I am with the with the toilet, right? So Nick, what's what's the time where you are? Oh, Tim, uh it's right now it's uh coming to eleven. Ten fifty-three. What do you do, Tim? I'm a I'm an artist. And I'm mostly a sculptor, but I do different kinds of art. And sometimes I consider myself a kind of a social sculptor because I'm doing a lot of things that uh, that are about what kind of a culture we can create that will survive the climate crisis. You know, the, if we actually survive and don't, extinct ourselves we're going to have to reinvent our culture and and create a pretty radically different civilization one that is not about acquisition and grinding nature into money but is about celebrating each other and living in harmony with nature and uh, celebrating beauty and and spiritual renewal that kind of thing do you feel that the, the virus has facilitated this somehow? Well, only, only in the sense that I think the virus is a gift in that it makes us realize that we are dependent on each other, that we're only as happy as the people around us. As far as my personal work is concerned, I've been doing this for many years and growing more and more frustrated with uh, just the the myopic, myopic culture that we live in, the dominant culture, is just so blind to the spirit and to the soul. Um, we are just so fixated on money and power and uh, social status that we become blinded to the fact that we're in relationship, not only with each other, but with the earth with Mother Nature, um, and we're going to have to make a very, very quick about face if, if we're going to keep our species alive. I really worry about the, the trajectory of the development of technology and this kind of fixation on the tools of, of technical mastery that turns into a kind of God. Prometheus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So does anybody have thoughts about that? How does that affect you? Yeah, Tim, I I I feel so blessed that I'm I'm getting to hear this from you. It is um, it is very comforting, and um, it is very comforting to hear that because uh, um, I <laughs> so I have this 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 kind of a uh, I don't know how I see my life, but. Like I, I feel I'm, I'm very much sucked into mother archetype, and uh, that is how I am. Like all the friends, like all the dogs and all the kids, they know me. Nobody else know me, but all the dogs and all the kids, like they are my friends, or <laughs> like very elderly people. That's so, great. Uh, uh, and so, I bet you feel, so, I bet you feel attacked like mother nature feeling has been feeling attacked you probably feel also there's an assault on 
on you in some way. Just that yeah, it's- but I like like so so I I feel I feel like if I I want to like the way I want to live my life, so I have been like really suicidal two months two years back, and I I worked hard on it, and then I I let my fantasy fantasies like play out in the world anymore. Like I don't suppress. So when I I speak about this, I I feel like I want to have four or five kids, and like I want to adopt ten fifteen kids, and I. I know I can manage because I walk like eight dogs together. Like that is bare minimum. When people ask me like, how can you do that? And I laugh and I say, I have magical powers. But it just come to me. And so it is so comforting that kind of birds and insects that are finding a way to my uh, backyard. I can't believe that. Like I'm like, finally, like God was keeping me isolated. Or maybe preparing for preparing me for this time, and um, yeah. So when Tim Tim is saying this, I feel like like so blessed. I feel that that divine which. So I, <laughs> I I'm sorry. I just like went into the flow. Uh, but yeah, I feel I feel very. Somehow it's like when there is too much of darkness, like stars, we can only see stars in the darkness, and we can only stare to a moon in the dark. So that, like, I can I can see those stars, I can see star and moon, and my eyes are comfortable because finally everything is dark. So it, uh, yeah, it feels like that. I'm, it is. I feel it's not good to be very comfortable in the body and the and the space like ethically because people are dying but then that's exactly what i feel so yeah yeah wow I, well you you've got a beautiful heart and it's good for you to to share that with people ah there's nicole a hey, uh the Australia is heard from. Hooray. Congratulations, you made it. I have to unmute you. Well, thank you, Kushbu. Thank you, Kushbu. Here, here's our friend Nicole from uh, from Sydney. Hello, Nicole. I'm Hi, glad everyone. you made it. Yep. Tell us how you're doing there. Uh, um, well, I live out um, in the country, so it's pretty quiet. All the shops are shut. Um, I'm pretty isolated anyway, because there's no neighbors or anything like that. Um, I went into town today and I just sat at the pub that's closed and um, talked to a couple of people on motorbikes um, about what it's like on the coast. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's hard to describe. It's just uh, really uncertain and people are sort of kind of just, I mean, I'm an artist and I live by myself anyway, so I'm used to being alone kind of thing. Um, But yeah, people are making contact on technology and talking a lot more on the phone and things like that. And, um, but yeah, there's just a real feeling of hanging on to yourself kind of thing. (laughs) What's gonna happen? No one really knows. and there, there's, like, I went to the supermarket, you know, there's a couple of people wearing masks and thing like, things like that, and everybody's doing physical distancing. There's lots of signs in the shops and there's, um, they have, like, things on the floor so that you stand back. So everybody's aware of it and 
aware of this virus and doing what they can, but it's really going to affect the economy because people's businesses are just shutting down and they're using technology. <laughs> um, yeah, but there's, and there's lots of conspiracy theories and strange things about 5G and um, uh, all sorts of things that I just kind of hold lightly, I suppose. And yeah, but I like to talk to people. People are really generous and friendly and, you know, trying to kind of, there's more connection in conversations and there's a real, there's a, it, this is a lovely community because it's quite isolated and, but I think it's, bit different in the cities and things like that just from what I've heard from people and I wouldn't like to be in Sydney for example I think it'd be really hard right because people so, get really anxious stressed. yeah words right, that, words, I, I just I'll let somebody else speak what what's happening elsewhere where I sit in Maryland yeah. it's looking pretty bad uh, but maybe I should go on with my story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your story. Okay, so my story was that uh, I've, I've been to the toilet once, I'm still hugging it, and I had, I had eaten these dehydrated vegetables on spaghetti. This is, Deb got these dehydrated vegetables for us. Uh, at, right. so, to assure that we would have nutrition in the in the event of some crisis, and right. which, which uh, in principle was a great idea. So Debbie's been whipping up on me because I she said I overate or I drank too much wine, and that must be why why I'm having this problem as I'm hugging the toilet. But anyway, I got control of that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sort of got the little mess in the bathroom cleaned up and went back out to watch television again. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, um, gaboom, I had another uh, rush to the toilet, except this time I didn't make it. And uh, so, and it just exploded out of me. So I feel pretty strongly that it was uh, it was these uh, dehydrated vegetables <laughs> that, that uh, uh, got the best of me. And I, when I had my dessert, I drank water and, and that rehydrated them <laughs> and they were <went, laughs> yeah, well, So what's the moral of the story here? Well, the moral of the story is that we have to be kind to our loved ones, okay? That's the basic moral of the story because you haven't heard anything yet. That's only what happened last night, okay? Um, but after this second trip to the toilet, and again, I'm being criticized for overeating and too much wine. Um, it must be her, her anxiety. Yeah, I mean, obviously she's trying to deal with it. Usually I wash the dishes in the evening. And, but last night I wasn't feeling that well. And so the dishes were still in the sink. And I said, well, okay, at least I'm going to prepare the coffee for um, tomorrow so that Deb will only just have to hit the button on the coffee maker the next morning. There, there was stuff in the sink, so I could only get eight cups into the into the pot. So I put the eight cups of water into the pot, right? Then I wanted to put four more cups in. So I filled the pot up to four again, and I just pour that into the coffee maker. And what happened was the coffee maker is immediately overflowing uh, because when you put 12 cups from the coffee pot into the coffee maker, it's a little bit too much, okay? And, and so there's these two little holes on the back, and, and the thing is uh, 
is spewing water all over the counter. So I said, oh my God. So I have to pick up the thing, pour, pour out some water out from a, I have water everywhere. And I still have the dishes in the, in the thing and I put down the coffee pot. So finally, I cleaned up all the water. Deb had gone to bed and um, I cleaned up all the water, got it leveled out in the pot and I was exhausted. Deb had gone to bed. I decided, well, okay, I, I've made the coffee now. I put the grounds in, I put the water in, I'm gonna go to bed. I'll take care of the dishes in the morning. So who knows, out of my description so far, what I did wrong. You didn't do the dishes. Well, I didn't do the dishes, but I knew, but that wasn't the, the wrong thing. Okay, so anyway, so this morning, <laughs> this morning I wake up and I had, a, I had a little dream in the morning, which I rather liked, and I decided that I was going to um, uh, write this down in my dream book. So I sat down at the dining room table and I'm writing this dream out, but I had hit the coffee maker so it would go on and start to brew the coffee, right? But I, I just sort of half awake, my hair's still crazy, before I wrote, I went in and I hit the coffee maker and I went back and sat at the table and started writing. So about 20 minutes later, Debbie comes out of the bedroom and I hear her say, oh no, no, no. <laughs> and she says, what did you do with the coffee maker? And here's there's 12 cups of coffee on the floor of the kitchen. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, um, so anyway, 12 cups of coffee on the floor, grounds all over the kitchen counter and every place. I have, to, I have two joint replacements. So I'm down on the floor, 73 year old man, trying to clean this thing up. Uh, and it was a mess and we, so anyway, make a long story short, we finally got that cleaned up. And then Debbie says, well, this coffee maker is ruined now. You're gonna have to get a, we're gonna have to get a new one. And of course we can't go, go next door and buy one. So we have to order it on Amazon. So I said, okay, uh, if it's ruined, I'll go buy another coffee maker. So then I went to the computer and I ordered a coffee maker exactly like the one we had. And they say, oh, you're going to get it between April 8th and April 20th. And I said, oh, no. Okay, so we're not going to have coffee for several days. <laughs> so this is all because of this, right? So we're not going to have coffee for several days. And so then I said, no, wait a minute. How can there be anything wrong with this coffee maker? All it does is heat water and make it go up through the little spout and through the coffee grounds. It must be okay. So I go back and I clean up the old coffee maker, which Debbie had said was gone. And I put new coffee in it, new water in it, hit the button. It's, there's nothing wrong with the coffee maker. There was only something wrong with me because I had failed to put the coffee pot under the coffee <laughs> this morning. And so that is my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Debbie still thinks I, I overeat and I uh, drank too much wine last night, which I agree. I agree to both of those things. Well, there, it was a parallel process between you having some explosion and also the coffee pot exploding. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's a, a flooding of sorts between you, with you and this overflowing experience. Yeah, it was, it, it was definitely a and, little, it, it was definitely an inundation. <laughs> Go ahead, Kushbu. Yeah, yeah, and I feel this 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 role also is is matching the chain, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, this like they're exploding. They're exploding some words, and so there is certain kind of alignment, like presence of this troll is making uh, right now, and. Uh, 
quite interesting mm. to hear this quite interesting to feel it i can yeah. feel it like it's a it's a chain of events it's, there's people coming and barging in it's not random it's the yeah. psychoid yeah mm interesting yeah yeah that's right the psychoid element yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah no doubt i i was definitely in the twilight zone during that period and yeah when i when i do something like that uh, they always say earth to jerome <laughs> you know so it means i need to be grounded so yeah but we are in such a stressful time here and our anxiety builds and we just need to think of ways to uh let go of that or at least steam and you've mentioned some ways like get involved with hobbies and different things right and uh, breathing and yoga and uh, things like that i found an interesting one that uh, people do if you're interested in hearing about it it was just a simple thing that these uh, the people uh, cognitive behavioral therapist uh, on some chat lines and uh, when they get people that are anxiety ridden and under stress uh, what they do is the first thing is they do is they ask them to practice breathing and so what they do is they take a belly breath you know, some people breathe up here but you want to do a belly breath and inhale for about three seconds and hold it like that with your belly coming out as right. you inhale and then you exhale like that well the same time you uh, inhale you want to grab your fists and so you want to go inhale for three seconds and then like that with, and release the energy but you also might want to put a word to it such as ah. calm yeah <laughs> I find that I find that really fascinating, uh, Jerome. Did yeah. um, just just I just want to check. Did you say that when you inhale, you let your belly go up, as in bigger? No. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So, bigger, right? Yeah. What What I want to say? Deep, deep breath, and your belly goes out. You hold it for three seconds. Close your fist, and then go. That was fascinating. <laughs> What's fascinating to me is that. Um, there was actually this breathing practice that um, I, I, I learned of um, some time back, but it was very specific. It was specific for dealing for when you had to deal with, um, there are certain kinds of people that just really drain your energy and then they're re like really negative people, right? And sometimes you're in situations where you just have to deal with them. But whatever the situation is, you can't just walk away, right? And the mm -hmm. practice was actually just simply doing the breathing like you just mentioned but the difference was that when you breathe in you actually contract your belly inwards so you actually actively um pull in while breathing in and the natural thing is i mean obviously for your body to um expand when you breathe in because your lungs are expanding and you know the belly will go up like you were saying mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah so I just, I just find it interesting because uh um, that was a practice um, that was, you know, basically dealing with when um, when you're dealing with certain negative people that physiologically drain you. So it was, you know, to just hold your hold your own and, you know, not react, but to practice this breathing where, yeah, when you breathe instead of your belly going up, it, you actually contract it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. I don't know what the reasoning is, but it's interesting. Yeah, there's all sorts of belly breathing exercises, uh, and uh, Kundalini yoga is very violent because you, you, yep. you force your air out with your stomach like that, back yeah. and forth, and it's it's that's almost a violent uh, reaction. I wouldn't recommend that unless yeah, you're talking you know, about the diaphragm area, right? I'm sorry, what? Um, you're, you're, um, you're, by belly, you're talking about like around the diaphragm area? Yeah, right. Yeah. It's just, yep, uh, yep. Yeah. the idea is to get some oxygen in there, but don't overdo it or you'll hyper-oxygenate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
but uh, it it causes your system to go into what they call the parasympathetic uh, parasympathetic system, uh, and that's yeah. how we relax and so forth. So if you feel yourself under stress, and they also uh, mentioned that it's okay to say, okay, I'm gonna be stressful for now and feel it, and then do the exercise. So you can alternate it because we are feeling the stress. We just need to admit it and say, you know, I'm really stressed. I'm terrified about yeah. going to the grocery store. Right. You know, and, but then I need to get rid of that. Uh, so that's uh, just some things that I picked up from yeah. breathing. We do want other panelists. As you see, we have uh, panelists from um, India, Singapore, Australia, uh, and several from the U.S. right now. Well, on the tail of, of what Jerome said, I think that's true, that, that we all feel stress in different ways. And it's helpful just to be aware that the whole situation is going gonna, is gonna to increase our stress for each of us. Right. And it'll be interesting just to to do a little self-monitoring to figure out where that stress is ending up in your life. Yeah, what comes to mind is uh, just from my own personal, like, is the hero's journey. And like, it came up a couple of days ago and I thought, wow, this is an opportunity to really go within and find what's there and connect with all these Jungian things about individuation, because everyone's going to be doing it, you know, and and, um, and just, yeah, like maintaining sovereignty of the moment and getting governing of your own emotions. But there's so many situations like, you know, when you're at the supermarket and you're all kind of, there's a big queue or, you know, there's like the other day I went to get petrol. I had no petrol and I was like, oh my God. So I drove into town and while I got the petrol, I also bought one of those containers. Mm -hmm. and I thought, what if the petrol station closes? And, sure. You know, I've got no petrol. I can't go anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Like I'm starting to sort of just think in a completely different way to what I did before yeah. about my own, my own, um, yeah, my own situation, my own uh, domestic kind of situation. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. It, yesterday, something really beautiful happened. I was standing out on the veranda and two women on horseback just came down the road and it was just the most beautiful sight. Oh, wow. Um, it was lovely because you know, there's no cars and it's quite, it's really quiet out here. And, and I just go for long walks down the road. And um, what's really nice is actually people stop in their cars and they say, are you okay? You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm just walking, you know? And um, people are intentionally being positive. And yeah, there's, it's just, it's this funny thing about making contact. Yeah. It, they do it in a more of a focused and present way. I think we're, I think what we're seeing is everybody in the world having to reorient. Um, yeah in in very major ways and uh you know the world is not going to go back to the way it was yeah um and uh i was showing on uh let's see if i have the picture uh, i was showing uh tim and i are in another group that we um uh, won't mention here but um we um we've been sharing with some people who uh, we like in California. And um, I shared this picture, which I've shown a, a few times 
Um, so this is what was wrong with the world the way it was uh, before this started. And this is the summation of it. I'll just share, share this picture momentarily. Um, and so uh, this is a 64 foot motor yacht, uh, which is yeah. in, a, in a local marina. And I don't know if you can see the name of it, but its name is Never Enough. And this was the problem with our materialistic uh, society uh, right up until two weeks ago. Um, and there are a lot of people that haven't figured it out yet. Uh, and, you know, here's, here's this motor yacht, the, the classic of Logos, the perfection of Logos, but uh, there's no life in it. The owner isn't using it. It's just sitting there at the dock. And, uh, you know, from his point of view, he'd like to, you know, for his next boat, he'd ha like to have a hundred foot yacht. And, um, and so I think people are going to be forced to spend time with their families and, and see the humor and things like the story I told about the dehydrated vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're going to have to get along with your with your spouse and your kids and and uh, teach them how to get along with you and so on and I think that's going to be ultimately for the better but anyway uh Sandy I, you started to say something and we got distracted uh do you do you remember what what you said you were saying or before I so rudely interrupted you. Was it about, was it, was I mentioning something about your story? Cause I, I can't remember which. I don't, I don't know. I, uh, you, I, was, you, I was talking about how the, the, my, my, one of my teenage students was basically being a troll. <laughs> oh, okay. I was bored to death. Oh, okay. It was, a, I'm sorry. It was that story where he was bragging about, how he how he had trolled people okay from around yeah. the world he was doing that he was pranking people in all sorts of ways uh obviously it's disturbing but he was saying i it made me feel so much better it made the time go by so i mean he's right. only 16 years old so right. something to think about when we think about these annoying people What's that? Where, what country are you in? I'm in US, I'm in California, San Diego. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we're in San Diego, we're not doing too bad. I mean, it's not that many cases and, but Los Angeles is yeah. hard. Right. Uh, we're close to Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, I well, think some folks are a little bit in denial still here, but most, Schools are shut down and such. Yeah. 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 I used to be a high school teacher and um, I keep thinking about ideas about um, education and, and sort of, you know, it, it is an opportunity to make things better. And, and uh, you know, I've had a few conversations with um, this friend of mine who used to live in, in China, but She's back here now and uh, she's in Western Australia and she's teaching all her Chinese students online now. And um, I think the education system's really going to change because they've well, been really sure. complaining about it a lot for years over here. I don't know what it's like in the US, but... Um, well, there, there has always been a problem with, with the education system, especially here. and. I just have noticed that students have been less and less uh, engaged and maybe flooded with too much homework and a lot of it is also yeah. online and there's, you know, contradictory, you know, messages given to the students and I almost feel like there was this, the, the kid, these students might have already on some unconscious level been detecting some sort of wave like this because they've already they were already like even the semester before they were already kind of pulling away from 
active engagement and are not liking mm -hmm. the, are not liking the yeah. online thing and they're not motivated because they're not around each other and they yeah. just want to throw in the towel and they had already done that they had already were disengaged with the academic aspect yeah. i mean they're engaged socially but not as it not not feeling motivated uh and te they're saying their teachers are checked out some too um maybe in, even in the community mm -hmm. colleges for the 18 19 year olds so it's i mean there was already a problem in the education education system and now with this I'm, I'm just concerned about motivation and yeah and why they were not so motivated like two three months ago i mean that's interesting um, did, did, uh, um, Sandy, are you saying that um, before the virus hit, there were, you know, these um, things that you noticed already that seemed to... Yes. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, know you're, I know you're talking about kids, but I, but I don't think this is too dissimilar. Um, like, you know, I'm sure we've all heard about the stories that when earthquakes or really big natural disasters hit, um, animals and yes, pets and all, they seem to behave differently in a way. Yeah. I think it's a very common thing, actually. And, and I don't know, I just thought there might be some relation there also. Yes, I am getting to that. And I mean, I think that's one of the things that Jung has talked about, you know, like when you have your ear to the ground, you're, you're detecting, you, you know what could be coming next. But definitely with young children, uh, you know, and we could say that this is all a problem of like the capital capitalism and, you know, parents are overworked and they don't have time to attend to their children and they're in school for way longer than they need to be because they have to get back from work. And um, I almost feel like this is an opportunity for kids to just take a break, you know, yeah, um, sure. you know from it all and, you, yeah. and, 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 and have some sorry. inner peace at home without having to run around so much. Yeah. Which isn't very interesting. Yeah, um, I, I want to mention one thing here. Um, our friends uh, Sean Steele and Miles Flag are doing amazing work for us on the YouTube channel, and I definitely appreciate uh, their work. And Sean has a, has a comment for for you uh nicole which is that he very much likes the painting uh that you have behind you oh. <laughs> yeah, great. and uh yeah i'm painting away i'm painting away this is a that's a um spider hole in the ground I, well, like it's close up that's what it is it's a hole in the ground <laughs> it's a spider hole yeah it's like a zoomed in spider hole Oh wow! Here's the that's the hole, and this is what the this is the arrangement that the spider made around it because they line everything up and they mm. put sticks and I've been going out into nature and um for some reason I'm just really drawn to mandala like things that are created by nature at the mm -hmm. moment yeah that and um and trees um yeah and just uh. I mean, I'm just really connecting to nature. I'm just kind of like, that's what's maintaining my equilibrium and my just keeping me going, I guess. Um, having a project, having, you know, having something to do. Um, well, nature, nature produces viruses, you know. <laughs> yeah, nature produces yeah. viruses, that's for sure. To add Someone that. said... Someone said today, uh, is it man-made? And because I asked them, I said, I'm going to go online later on today and talk about this. You know, what do you think? So they were chatting away. And, and the other guy said something. Um, someone said something about the, about the, uh, what do you call it, the um, vaccine. Some strange thing about it, about it being some kind of not what they're telling us it is or something. <laughs> I don't know. I was just kind of like going, okay. 
Well, you know, I think I think there are a lot of government secrets that we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, I was a bit alarmed the other day when someone said that, well, they closed the border in WA, so no one's allowed in or out. But then my friend last night went to Canberra, so he must have... You can still travel mm -hmm. in Australia, like still. But yeah, I was a bit concerned, that, you know, if they, if you can't go in and out different states, that's, yeah. that freaks me out somewhat, kind of, you know, kind of, if somebody gets sick or a family member, or something like that, you can't get to them or, you know, it's. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not happy. Um, yeah. So there's yeah. there's someone named Logan that's trying to get on here, and I'm going to just tell you, Logan, you're you're going to be out of here because we don't find you registered. So. Oh, yeah, I can see him too. How do I need to do anything to that? I can see that chat box. Yeah, the chat box comes <laughs> up. Comes up. We're we're. Uh, we're deleting them as quickly as we can. But, uh, and the one, the one good thing here is that uh, on the YouTube chat, because Miles and Sean especially are doing such a good job of monitoring the YouTube chat, and I appreciate that very much, um, these people are being blocked from my channel forever. Okay, we're, it's not it's not a question of giving them a timeout, you know. No, no three strikes and you're out here. Uh, this is this is the channel that I operate, and I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm not gonna have anybody. Um, yeah, they're doing a good job on that, and then I'm trying to keep up with these participants. Right, they just keep popping up. Uh, keep, oh yeah. So and. Um, so anyway, um, so Sean has a comment here, though. He says, I, I heard an interesting hypothesis about Faust, that Mephistopheles was actually a negation spirit part of karma. And uh, does anybody else besides me want to comment on that? I'd be happy to, but. Well, you had your wrong with Metastoph. I can't say that word. <laughs> Meph Mephistopheles. Mephistopheles. Yes, I, I, I actually had a, had a conversation with him once. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so anyway, um, so we're we're seeing the the best part of uh, humanity and and uh sort of not the worst i mean i think these are just immature kids that are trying to pull this stuff in the chat on youtube and uh, also the ones that are trying to do things on on zoom it's a shame uh that they're making it bad but at least the ones on youtube i know they won't be back <laughs> because they won't be able they won't be seen on this channel any longer the problem is is they just create another you know email and another youtube they just keep i suppose it. they I also suppose. they also compete with each other in terms of guess how many i did this month you know it's just it's crazy it's uh, yep okay well uh, youth will be served often on silver platters <laughs> and why, uh, why are you eating not dehydrated vegetables? Can't isn't there any fresh vegetables? What's no, there's on? fresh vegetables, but but Deb thought that we it would be great to have this in the house just in case, yes. just in case we don't have access to the food store for a period of time. Right. Uh, and so okay. she wanted to try it, and it and it was a good idea. But and she thought yes. she had rehydrated it, honestly. Okay, but. Yeah, right. I did watch what she did, and she kind of sprinkled it over the spaghetti sauce, so I know that it wasn't fully re 
hydrated before <laughs> we right. ate our dinner last night. <laughs> um. Yeah, last Friday night I had a little party, a Zoom party with two girlfriends, one in Western Australia and the other one in Newcastle. We just, it was really fun. It was yeah. really nice, like, to just connect. And, um, and yeah, there's just a really nice... Uh, Thank God we've got this technology because right on. it's how we can help and support each other. Absolutely. And uh, I met this guy. I went down the coast a couple of days ago and this man came over and I was standing at a table, outdoor table, and he said, don't be frightened and came and sat down and started eating something. And I said, oh, no, I'm okay, you know. Anyway, then I started chatting to him and... Um, I said, oh, you know, I just don't know what to do. And I said, I feel really useless. And I was even thinking about going into an aged care facility and just saying, just turning up and going, how can I help? What can I do? You know? And um, he said, oh, funny you should say that. Um, and then he told me how he was by himself and he had a graze on his arm and he'd fallen over. And he said that he rang some health organization and nobody picked up the phone and uh and I just went and got my card and I said oh I'm the love doctor you know like I'll help you you know here's my <laughs> number and uh, his name was Ben and um and yeah I just thought oh well, you know I may as well just go with the moment and just you know reach out and uh anyway he hasn't rung me but this is what's happening. It's like there's this, there's this reordering of the way we live. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a better world from it, but, it, but at a very high cost. Um, because, yeah. because um, you know, it's quite evident that the, the numbers of people that are going to get this disease uh, are very lot, very high, and yeah. um, you know, and and there are a lot of young people that are also dying now from it, and so there's going to be um, mm -hmm. there's going to be a cost, and there's going to be a um, you know a hidden benefit. I mean, the fact that we're having this tonight is the hidden benefit that my grandfather married my grandmother and not his fiance during the Spanish flu in 1918, because uh, she and her four sisters all died on the same weekend. And, wow. and if you, um, if you look up Philadelphia, uh, Spanish flu, uh, on, YouTube, or I'm sorry, not on YouTube, but through Google or Bing or something like that, uh, you can find out the story. But the story was that um, Philadelphia, and, and mind you, this happened on November the 10th, 1918. So it was the day before the end of World War One, And uh, the city fathers of Philadelphia wanted to have a celebration because of the end of the war. And so they were going to have a parade, but they had had uh, 600 sailors in the Philadelphia Navy Yard who had the flu and they allowed them to go out and march in this parade. And the result was that 16,000 people died in Philadelphia. And uh, in St. Louis, they also wanted to have a parade, but they canceled their parade. And the result was they had 700 people die instead of 16,000. And right now we have the same situation in um, New Orleans uh, that had their Mardi, Mardi Gras parade. And uh, Louisiana is on their back right now. And there's this uh, type of... Uh, thermometer that they're selling here in the U.S. now that connects directly into the internet. So you take your temperature and your temperature gets reported directly to this online system. And the result is that they have a kind of weather map of the whole country of where people are having fevers. 
and they've sold a million of these things, more than a million now, I'm sure. Um, and, uh, and the result is that you can see their weather map. And at one point, about 10 days ago, you could see that, that Florida was all bright red and nothing else in the rest of the country. So you could already see 10 days ago that the fact that Governor DeSantis didn't shut down Florida was having a horrible uh, result there. And of course, this takes about a three weeks or a month to work through. So then there was something else that Deb told me about, about how all these kids then went back to uh, their homes and you can see uh, outbreaks all over the country because of all these kids that did come to spring break and they all have caught it and they've spread it around the country. Um, so it's, uh, it's a big issue and uh, huh. so, so anyway, um, social distancing does work. Um, I love you all, but <laughs> I'm glad we're distant. Uh, Tim, we haven't seen much of your face today, but... Um, it's still here. I, I can hear you. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, w w would you like to uh, sort of uh, wrap things up, and then, then we'll ask Kushbu to uh, provide us with, with her mantra. Yes, uh, indeed. Well, I just, it's so great for me to be able to connect with all of you. Um, even though, you know, many of you I don't know very well, it's, it's very gratifying to be able to hear people's stories and especially see your faces and see you um, um, up and alive and, and caring about other people. Uh, this is what makes us human beings thrive, is intimate connection with each other. And the more bizarre the world gets, the more we need to connect with each other. And although it would be great to be able to hug you and touch you and, and have you in, in meet space, you know, this is, this is still pretty nurturing. And so I just appreciate everybody's being involved. So thank you for showing up for this. I'm sorry it's not more, um, I'm sorry we can't exchange more because of all the technical difficulties and all that. But hopefully we'll be able to do this on a regular basis and I look forward to hearing from you more. So thank you. Okay, there's a few things that are happening on the chat that are positive now. <laughs> so let me just mention those. First of all, there's a, a man named Gerard Sanford, and he's asked, he says, how's Joss doing? Do you know Gerard San Sanford, Joss? Uh, you're on mute. We don't hear you. Just a moment. Go ahead. Now you can speak. Oh, I'm sorry, um, but all I know is through here, and I'm fairly new, so this is just my, what, third time, uh, Skip? Right. But um, I just want, want to say, you know, that um, I'm, I'm fine, and um, I think we're all fine for us to be here. I mean, it's awesome, you know, to be connecting, and, uh, you know, everyone has contributed bits of wisdom and insights. And after all, Skip and Tim, this is called what, Wisdom Path? Yes. So we're all students, we're all learning, and we're all in this together. That's, so that's the cool thing about it. And we're from all over the world, unreal. You know, we couldn't do this like 10, 15 years ago. Nothing so like it, yeah. We're, yeah. you know, we're in a time now. <laughs> yes, right now we're, yeah, in a kind of a pickle. But, um, you know, there's a lot of positive things going on. And with even with this troll thing, I mean, come on now. Um, why is it happening now? I think it's to show a parallel of what's going on. It's like a coronavirus, you know, it's very invasive. 
and these trolls are invasive. So we're getting a little bit of taste of this irritant, but it's just a mild one when you think about it. But what I'm so impressed about everybody in this family is that how we're dealing with it. We're dealing with this negativity in a very, you know, calm and positive and almost humorous way. And so I have to um, give thanks to Tim and Skip for their wonderful, you know, exemplary leadership. And it's this kind of leadership that um, we can, you know, be grateful for. And that's another thing. We need to maintain that attitude of gratitude for every little thing, including what um, Jerome said about the breath. We have to remind ourselves every day that each breath we take is a gift. Well, that's for um, sure. Yes. And Skip, yes, you're right. It's all, it's, we're going through um, a reordering. It's a reorientation. And uh, Tim, you're right. It's going to be a new normal. And um, Nicole, it is a hero's journey. But guess what? We're all in it together. We're all in this hero's journey. And okay. Skip, yeah, there is, like you said, that, and then that ship never enough. But you know, with us, it's enough. It's more than enough. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing us all together. In, a, in Hawaiian, it's ohana, meaning family. Mm -hmm. And it's extended family. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, for, those, for those of you who don't know, J Joss is also happens to be a psychiatrist. <laughs> and and uh, so uh, she's checking up on all our well-being. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Yes, yeah, but, but it's uh, Skip and Tim who are the glue to this entire community. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it is like it, it's our training, isn't it? Yeah, and we it's we like have a training. we we have a nice uh, uh, chat here from Mirz who uh, says that she'll join us uh, next time. Uh, it's for her. It's already one o'clock in the morning, I think. So I appreciate um, Mirts being here. She's uh, from Brazil, and uh, some of us know her well, not well, but um, yes. And she says we're all family, and uh, so um, Joss, there's something called o o Hono no Ono or something from Hawaii. What is that? Um, um, do you know um, what I'm talking about? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, it's called Ho'oponopono, um, which um, means uh, it, it, it's a form of practice to, um, to um, maintain um, Ho'oponopono. Um, uh, it, it's, a, it's a kind of like method of um, uh, coming to a state of peace and harmony and it has a lot to do with uh, forgiveness in fact it's what um, skip your um, sweet wife had mentioned um, last time to first of all say um, I love you I, I thank you please forgive me and I forgive mm. you those four yeah. main mm. things and um, when you bring that all together, it helps release the negativity and burden and guilt that you may have been carrying, and it brings self-forgiveness into right. um, your self-healing. But right. it also heals whatever interaction you may have had that may have been um, of, uh, you know, uh, a difficulty with a, another uh, person or in a, another relationship, but that's what ho'oponopono means. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so Deb learned this as, as something that one should say to somebody who's dying, and you know we're learning on television about incidents where one one woman let off her husband at the hospital door and was told to park and when she came back they wouldn't let her in the hospital so she never got to say she loved her husband and and he died um and she never saw him again after she dropped him off at the hospital door and so we're all called to 
um, make sure we do all these four things in our life because this virus is taking people so fast. It's like in a day and you get sick and you feel really bad. And so you decide to go to the hospital and, and that's going to be the end of it for a lot of people. And uh, so we just have to remember to tell our loved ones, thank you. I love you. I forgive you. Can you forgive me? Those four things. Um, and if you ever have occasion to drop someone off at the hospital and you might not be able to go in and visit them there before they die, make sure that you cover those four points because we're going to have a whole world in grief very soon. Okay. It's not, it's not only the people that are dying now because that's a small number. I mean, we've, we've only hit a million cases worldwide so far, but, um, you know, the, Deb had a, had a very disturbing figure, uh, this morning from a reliable source that I'm not at liberty to d divulge, but the source estimated that about half the U S population will have the coronavirus within uh, four to six months. And so that means 160 million people will have it. And if 1% of them die, that's 1.6 million deaths. And the reality is that, that um, you know, Italy's actual death experience is 10%, and, and China seems to have been uh, about 5% so far, at least that's what they're admitting. And so that, that means more like 10 million deaths. And so that's pretty uh, sobering fact. And so we all have to think about how uh, we're going to, you know, love our grandparents, love our parents, um, you know, love one another um, because, you know, young people have been taken too. There are many cases of that. And, um, so anyway, well, um, Skip, I'm thinking we should probably close this up. It's been two hours. Right. Uh, Skip, so we were you going to give us some kind of uh, blessing or something that you had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before that, I just uh, let me get myself back into this. Okay. Um, before that, I just. As uh, as uh, Sir Skip mentioned, that uh, people are gonna like lot of people are gonna be in grief, uh, which is true, which is true. And we all, as a admirer of uh, uh, Dr. Carl Jung or student of Dr. Carl Jung, um, I just want to remind that there is there is some. We all need love and care and support. That is the main thing we all are here. At the same time, there is there is more to this group than than uh, just our own needs. Um, another thing which I wanted to share is that people are going to be in grief, and collectively, we all are experiencing compromise of our freedom not for war reason or not for like but we consciously is compromising our own freedom for the well-being of of all of us and a lot of lot of young people don't like they don't know it they don't understand it that we consciously we are consciously compromising our freedom so so I just want to tell all of all of you that, that there is something more than we are just being here of our own own needs. So let's just you know let I just want to send blessings to all the health workers, all the all the frontline people, and and I I have a feeling that the next phase of frontline people we all are gonna be there. 
the round two when a different kind of frontline people are going to be needed and that i think we are we are being prepared for that um with that i uh, i i start my prayer before that anybody wants to like just sum it up and then we can uh, i can do a prayer and uh, sir ship can finish the call i i just like to say one thing before you do that and that is that uh this group is going to be the kernel of uh helping the whole world keep its mental health balance and um you know we're not psychotherapists here with the exception of Joss but um we are experienced people and and it's it's people uh, us and people like us that i hope will participate with us here and will help the world um balance out over time and each time as we do something whatever we do whether it's a kindness to someone or whatever it is it it sends waves out balancing the world so uh so anyway thank you everyone for being here i appreciate it very much and uh kushbu would you uh finish us out here yeah yeah you can uh you will be able to read the prayer which i am speaking in your chat um i will be chanting this uh, for three times and uh, you can join it i will be uh, yeah i start now uh loka samasta sukhino bhavantu loka samasta sukhino bhavantu loka samasta sukhino bhavantu shanti 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 namaste namaste god bless you everybody thank namaste. you kushbu i i just mentioned to our listeners that um Kushbu is uh singing a mantra uh from a language that or originated in Sanskrit and Sanskrit is a, a spiritual language it was created by the Indians thousands of years ago as a spiritual language and it's not used in spoken language anymore but it is used in things like this mantra and so if you feel yourself moved by it even though you can't understand the words that's why because these these sounds that um kushbu was singing for us in this closing um were developed in over thousands of years as spiritual sounds that really uh, resonate with us at a very very deep unconscious level in all human beings and i know whenever i listen to you kushbu i i personally am very deeply moved 
and uh, I very much appreciate your participation here and your closing us out. So uh, Tim and I will be on tomorrow at 11 U.S. Eastern time again, uh, trying to reach Europe. And uh, we hope others of you will join us. Uh, we know it's going to be hard for Nicole, but um, uh, we, I hope others of our members will, will join um, and and we'll hopefully see Nicole again on Monday when, <laughs> when we are on at uh, 8 uh, p.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Monday. So that would be um, uh, 11 a.m. For, for Nicole. And I hope, hope you can join us again. It was great to have you here today. Yeah. And th thank you yeah. very much for your participation. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, so, everyone. Yeah, so we'll see you again all soon, and uh, peace. Take care. Peace. Bye. Peace. Aloha. Aloha. Bye.